Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing an Arkham theatre amplifier, the AVR390. This new model is 7.1 uh, and renowned for its home theatre performance and its music performance, which is very rare from an, from an AV receiver's perspective. Nevertheless, uh, it's got all of the modern features you would expect from a home theatre amplifier. 4K, Atmos, in fact it's 7.1.4, um, I think it's about 80 watts in stereo mode, it's about 60 watts when you're driving all seven channels, and, and look, in our industry, uh, 60 watts is, is more than enough. You've got to have a pretty big room or really, really demanding speakers before those 60 watts isn't really going to do a, a wonderful job. So. Let's have a look. So, Arcam. Their packaging pretty much looks like this. All of it. Uh, their stereo amplifiers, all of those things. Brown packaging. Black, uh, black, black, black text. On one end is the CRL number. And noting that it's in a little pocket bag, so potentially that can be removed and utilised in the back of the manual or something along those lines to record the CRL number for insurance or other documentation purposes. The, uh, the packaging other than that is very muted, with a little bit of information about the fact that it's an AVR, and uh, some information about Spotify Connect support and other things along that on one end. These boxes are sealed with uh, basic packing tape, so opening this is really, really easy. A simple slice of the knife, and a nick at the top, and we're into it. These products are very well protected because, of course, they've come all the way from Arkham. So, this polystyrene on either side. In it, as we drill down, is their accessories. Now, in this in this bag, we have got um, IEC power cord, microphone for the purposes of the uh, direct setup, two AAA batteries for the remote control, a uh, FM aerial and a USB cable. A New Zealand IEC power cord is supplied off to one side and then the unit itself. Now this is quite quite heavy so like many heavy things what I'm going to do is carefully roll it and take the box off the product not the product off the box. Now, uh, now that we're looking at the bottom of it we've got Arcam's extensive user manual. Now this is a book. Look at the thickness of that. It's over an inch. It's big, it's heavy. Obviously this is a relatively simple home theater amplifier. But what Arcam do is kind of special. They, they drill right into the setup so that they use lots of photos, lots of arrows, lots of diagrams to ensure that you're not having to guess at how to get this performing very, very well. Uh, and of course with all that information and then making it uh, bilingual or everything else, it's going to end up quite large. Right, so, taking the polystyrene off, very, very straightforward. And it's highlighted that in the bottom of that is Arcam's remote. Put that off to one side for a moment. Again, rolling this carefully. Getting rid of the polystyrene. Now this is protected by one of those bubble paper bags. Uh, a simple nick at the back here, and it's very straightforward to start taking this out of the bag. Uh, now the amplifier uses um, Arcan's Class G amplification, so it's not as heavy as some others that may be of similar size. Nevertheless, still quite heavy, and I'm being careful to sort of rock this um, and get the bag off slowly. Okay. Right. Now, before we have a look at this, I want to touch on the remote control. So many remote controls nowadays are kind of getting a little bit kind of uh, plasticky and lightweight. Um, Arcam haven't done so. They've kept their remotes functional, but of good, of a good build quality. So the remote control has a good look and feel to it, a nice weight. Easily balanced in the hand once the remote control, uh, sorry, the battery is added. It's got a scallop in the bottom making it easy to operate being left or right handed. The main buttons, uh, the main volume and other control buttons are centrally located and so easy to operate with your thumb 
without having to really sort of look too much. It's a good look and feel to it, and navigation is easy. Right, so the amplifier itself. Firstly, it's an extremely muted design. Um, it's rather than making it too fussy at the front, uh, the things that you don't need to use every day are actually buried deep within the setup, rather than having buttons on the front. Nevertheless, as we start across at it looking, looking at the front, we've got a menu, a button, input, up and down, an OK button, and an information button associated with what's going on. Over this side, past the remote control, which is also used for all the setup and other things too, because it's just a rotary encoder. You have mute, mode, direct button, which turns off the DSP, the display, which, which dims the front display, and the zone button, enabling it to then operate the functions of the multi-zone if it's implemented. There's a 3.5mm headphone output and a 3.5mm auxiliary input on the front, and then the big switch for its power. You'll see this, this sort of slot. The style is actually for air ventilation, to draw air through the amplifier as required. And speaking of air ventilation, as I rock this forward, you'll see the big vents at the top, ensuring this is not going to overheat. Spinning it around, you'll see that the product is relatively deep. It needs that, from a chassis perspective, to ensure that the circuit topography and layout is the very best it can be for its stereo or music performance. Packing circuit boards on top of each other or cramming a lot of stuff in only adds to the noise floor of the amplification. And this has almost immeasurably low total harmonic distortion because they've chosen to separate things that could radiate noise away from things that may then be degraded by that noise. Okay. Looking at the back, this is where you see how wonderfully appointed the product is for its price. A myriad of analog inputs off to one side. Um, you've got, uh, look, they're all labelled appropriately and you can change that if required, but you've got one marked STB, Game, AV, BD or Blu-ray, uh, PVR and CD. Over, to, over in the subsection here we've got the digital inputs. There are four coax and two optical inputs. Um, over to this side though, we've got the zone output. That's a pre-out to go into amplification if required. Although the amplifier will support a second zone within its own setup if you're only running 5.1 in your main room. This is the main pre-out. And this is, uh, sorry, the main uh, outputs for height effects associated with the 0.2 or 0.4 of its 7.1.4 processing. The, amplification, uh, the processing chip on this will support all of the modern surround sound modes, uh, DTS-X, uh, Dolby Atmos, all of those things. But being only a 7 channel amplifier, if you want to operate those uh, additional up to 4 speakers, you want to add a 4 channel power amplifier. It can be modest in quality if you wish, or it can be Arcam's 4 channel power amp to sort of seal the deal in the brand, but nevertheless. And it also has the outputs for a second sub and other things there. The pre-outs that you expect with any modern amplifier are then sec uh, sectioned off in this point here. It allows you to add power amplification if required or use this as a processor only. Moving across the back, you've got the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, binding posts for its, its uh, onboard amplification. Again, I'd like to highlight well a couple of things. Firstly, they're all right and left delineated with the centre obviously being in the middle. The two outermost are for the either zone 2, height effects or uh, surround rears. So this can be this sixth and seventh channel of amplification can be selected internally in its setup to the traditional 7.1, uh, 5.1.2 with two sets for Atmos or they can be zone 2. Now with that configuration you can select any, any way of running things appropriately for your own setup. If you've got an excellent stereo pair of speakers in a second zone, well, use this for perhaps Atmos, and use the pre-out for zone 2 to run that extra special pair of speakers via a good power amplifier. Okay, following across, we've got an Ethernet connection. Now that allows this product via a DLNA uh, or the app to stream music, and it will support Spotify Connect. There's a 5 volt USB. Now this is for powering any number of different devices and potentially could power a wireless uh, internet 
uh, network connection if required. You've got your FMDAB uh, aerial socket and then you've got a 12 volt trigger. Um, right. Sorry, that's, the, that's actually the uh, 6 volt output to power other devices. There's a number of products from Arcam like their Bluetooth dongle that can be powered via there. Then you've got an IC socket. Now the RS232 is for control only and then you've got the triggers in and out for turning on and off zone 2, triggering up and down screens, projectors, all of those things. This unit has one rear external fan and one at the front to draw air through and ensure it's cooling. The fans are relatively silent and uh, should the amplifier be running really hard and the fans kick in, uh, if I understand correctly, they'll actually shut them off temporarily during quiet scenes so that you never actually hear those fans. Okay, other than a bit of information, serial number and some warning, that's the back sorted. So, this excellent theatre amplifier from, Am uh, from Arcam, beautifully musical in its presentation, excellent stereo performance, superb home theatre performance, very, very easy to set up and get the most out of, is very proudly unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.